so uh, next in our series we're going to talk to uh, Alina and Sylvia from Mimbra who have been uh, a partnership with originally a third member of the company for a very long time. We'll talk a little bit more about that. I wonder if you could just start by just telling us what Mimbra is now. What Mimbra is now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, our catchphrase is a female-led acrobatic theatre company. Yep. I think that's the... But then, you know, it's under constant. Our last show was a circus show with all mixed of circus skills. But I think we talk, we often try to get theatre into the description because we like yeah. to mix it with stories or feelings or emotion. But, you know, what we started as was an acrobatic company. And that was a trio originally, yourselves and Emma. Yeah. And you met at? At the former circus space in yeah. Hoxton which is now the National Centre for Circus Arts. So we were all uh, in the same course, which at the time was mm -hmm. a BTEC in performing arts. Were you in the same arts. year? Or we were in the same year. You were all in the same year, so... And then, originally, I think Emma and Lena were working We came together. over together from Sweden to go to yeah. the course. Mm -hmm. And then I was in the class, and during the second year, uh, they decided to we work with me. Up. We were Amazing. like, we would like to do a three high, because basically the previous year yeah. group, they were trying to do a three high for their end of year show. And actually it was, I think, two guys and a girl, and they didn't manage. So Lena being Lena was like, I will base you, Emma, and Sylvia on three high. And we managed. So that was Brilliant. our, yeah, and from there. So you needed, you said you needed three people to achieve that. It was as simple yeah, as that. Yeah, me and yeah. Emma was already started, doing, yeah. I mean, me and Emma had worked as a, with, a, with a third performer from Sweden and done some outdoor um, busking mm -hmm. tours before we came to, to England. Brilliant. So um, go back. Let's do each of you. So mm -hmm. your experience in Sweden before you met and formed the company. I was very set on becoming a journalist. A journalist? <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. And then I, um, but I also spent quite a lot of time on festivals and random things. And at some point, somebody did some juggling and I possibly <laughs> in quite a drunken state asked them to teach me and learned some juggling and then I was a bit like, ah, oh, you know, and then learned to do it with fire and things. And then I started doing that as just a way of uh, funding my festival oh, and okay. uh, traveling around. And sort of got, got half into circus that way. And, uh, and some friends told me about a circus school. So I thought, ah, I was just finishing off college um, as in the equivalent of A-levels here. Mm -hmm. And I was going to go traveling a bit. And I went like, oh, I'll do circus for a year before I do my proper studies. Okay. And so I went to a, a, a circus school in Sweden that just opened, and after me and Emma left, it closed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was our time, um, and we got, and we just got really into it. Yeah. And then me and Emma went um, with uh, a, a third performer from there. We went busking through Europe. Right. We bought a Ford Transit and drove our way through Europe and just busked, really. Wow. Uh, and went and, and drove over to. He parked up. Uh, he parked up the van in uh, in uh, Calais, and we hitchhiked our way across. This is a long time ago. You yeah. <laughs> no, even then you couldn't hitchhike. Actually, we asked like a truck driver, and they were like, "No, you need to go as foot passenger, but on the other side, I can take you to London." <laughs> and then we went to what was then Circus Space and yeah. uh, to audition because they'd lost our audition tape, and wow. got okay. into the circus school there. And yeah. Then we met, met Silvia. So we were then working yeah. as a duo, but we had worked as a trio. Mm -hmm. We liked the trio format. And, um, and once, I mean, literally, we started working on a trick, but we had a Cuban uh, teacher, Vincente Moreno Espinosa, who was super inspiring and someone who really, like, yeah, I think very much thanks to him that, like, he was like, yeah, yeah, we work on that trick, but we'll yeah. work on some other things as well. Mm -hmm. And he just threw a whole lot of challenges at us. We were like, there is no way. Yeah. And he had this thing, difícil pero no imposible. It was like difficult but not impossible. That was his and, right. yeah. Wow, wow. that's terrifying. Just yeah, <laughs> yeah. terrifying. Yeah, I mean, was, we were all over the place. So he was the one who introduced this uh, bankin, which mm -hmm. is uh, called mimbre in in Cuban. Um, for the that's technique. the name. Oh, okay. said, um, um, that's a mimbre. That's, that's a mimbre, a mimbre. In, in Cuban. But it, it means wicker. Yeah, weaving, yeah. weaving structure. I know, I googled it. But I know. You can buy some nice baskets. The, uh, yeah. English banquin, what's it called in, uh, in French? It's um... No, banquin is French. 
Mm-hmm. Um, English, yeah. English, it has different uh, different no uh, idea, expression in yeah. basket. Some people call it basket. Actually. Basket. So Let's, go basket Let's go yeah. back then. Let's go back to your your journey. To my journey. Yeah. So I'm I was a gymnast as a kid. So yeah. I but like sport gymnastics com- competitive, and then I stopped mm-hmm. because. I started quite early, so I did it from six until about 14, and then by the time I went to high school, I had other things to think about, and I didn't want to spend so much time training. Uh, so I started studying languages, because I wanted to become an interpreter, and that's what brought me to London, because a friend of mine was coming, and I thought, oh, it'll be good, I'll spend a year there, and I'll learn English, and then I'll go back and do interpreter interpreting school yeah. however you call it up yeah. in the north of italy there's quite a prestigious one but obviously i never went um yeah. i kind of felt like i wanted to move my body again i had a few years without moving coming to london uh you know discovering you know alcohol and all that and being becoming quite unhealthy and then i thought oh, it'd be really nice to start doing some movement and somebody told me there is this school that just opened mm-hmm. they've got evening courses so i i just went and started doing acro there um you know like amateur evening classes mm-hmm. and then somebody said oh they also have a course and they're auditioning and i auditioned and i got in and then that was it. It was wow. totally random. Yeah, so I mean, that, everyone yeah. got in in that year. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't <laughs> that, that hard. We, it wasn't that hard. <laughs> we were like the, the test rabbits. Like. But there's, yeah. there, so there is an alternative world, world where you're a journalist reporting yeah. something and you're translating it in a booth uh, in the back yeah. there into yeah. Italian. <laughs> this could have happened somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. Not. <laughs> <laughs> or not. Or not. Okay, so, no. um, so you, you graduated at the same time at three, of course. Three? No, it was no, two, two at the time. Two at the time. Yeah. yeah. So you did two years there, and then how quickly did Mimbra become an entity? So we both, I mean, so after, we're literally like training for the end of year show, we were training for this, um, you know, the specific tricks, and we started to work out a choreography together. And that, and, and just the performance of that, we got so much really positive feedback. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we really enjoyed working together, and like I say, really wor- enjoyed also working with Vincent. Um, so we all had commitments for that summer already. So I was going back touring with uh, in in Sweden and Europe, and uh, you were working with another, yeah, another outdoor company. Yeah. Company, but we so we set up like okay, let's meet back here in October, mm-hmm. and um, we decided to go to Cuba to train with the yeah. the Cuban teacher who we'd been working with. That was the three of you as a, as a group. Yeah. yeah. So we basically came back came back to England, did any work we could do. In yeah, fact, we selling. went to Cuba with the money that we got fired with. <laughs> yeah, okay, we had wow. our job. first gig as a trio, maybe not first gig, but a first sort of contract as a trio, we yeah. basically got fired. Okay, why? <laughs> they wanted <laughs> sexy dancers, okay. so we were not okay. kind of that kind of... Yeah. Our first choreographies, format. they were very like low on the floor and weavy and all that. Yeah, you know, yeah. It was acrobatics and intrigued. Yeah. You know, yeah. it, it, it was... It was nice, but, um, <laughs> but it was a very corporate uh, Christmas gig where everyone was sitting at a table and then they decided to put loads of smoke. Of smoke. <laughs> so no one could see us, like, we were just making this they? smoke. And they were like, uh, those acrobats, we don't understand what they're doing. We're like, <laughs> we'd asked so many times, we said, could you put a bit less smoke? But they no. liked the smoke more than they liked us. So they bought us <laughs> out. They bought us out of the gig, essentially, <laughs> and employed some dancers instead. Yeah. But we were quite happy because we didn't we like, were like we no, no, no. to. And we went to Cuba with yeah. the money. Brilliant. It's pretty good. Well, we did quite a lot of work that autumn yeah. as well. But yeah, well, well, yeah. Yeah. This brings up a really good point. I mean, the first time I remember uh, when I was at National Theatre Booking, and I said, oh, we have all female ac- acrobatic troupe. And everyone, you know, the room went, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Lovely, sexy girls doing acrobatics. It, that oh, perception. Yeah. And that's... So, I mean, you've been my education in that very much, kind of going, well, hang on, there's another way. And, you know, and many people look to you for that. So how interesting that that experience was so early on. And how, how clear did you have to be from the beginning that that's not, you, you had a different message, different journey as a female group? We were very clear from the beginning of yeah. the start already. Uh, and I think... Mm. I mean, partly, I think, with also the discipline that we chose because with the acrobalance you've got to have a base Mm -hmm. and then because we were a trio a middle and a flyer so okay we picked according to size although lena was the base so she's not quite or maybe skills as well i was because i was i had done gymnastics i was Mm -hmm. more used to kind of jump and do leaps or somersaults or whatever so um and i think that already determines in a certain way 
how your physicality, how you present yourself. You're not this pretty little yeah. thing that yeah. jumps around. You know, no offense, but no, you no, know, no. it kind of Absolutely. you have to be yeah. there. And then we kind of quickly realize that, you know, we actually attracted good attention. Like, wow, you can do that as three, and you're not even that different in size. Mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. not like a massive guy with a tiny girl. Yeah. Uh, and I think, I mean, we felt like this is actually there is um, a good message here that we not even try to speak out like you know although yeah but I think a lot of it was within us and what we yeah. did so but I think that inspired us yeah. then to really then use that as a as our but, aim and mission but it started I mean the starting point partly was let's do some tricks that they don't expect three women to do mm-hmm. yeah. yeah even though yeah. and, and, and in the combination of bodies that, that mm-hmm. are not expected but I mean, I did come from quite a radical anarcho-feminist background yeah. <laughs> in my teenage education. Yeah. And I mean, I was very, like, I think very much that, like, we don't want to do that. Mm-hmm. We want to be able to be yeah. us and be ourselves and not pretend to be someone else. We don't want to package it a certain way yeah. to be accepted. Yeah. Um, so it was so definitely the, the, the physicality, like, helped that, but I also think that's partly why we chose that physicality. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was a yeah. conscious decision to go, we would like to do this as three women, mm-hmm. because at that point, people didn't expect it to be sure. so. Sure, yeah. Um, it's but interesting, because it my perception is, I've always seen, you know, in my whole career, I've seen you, and many, many others, and I, I just accept it as... And I think it's an, I mean, it's an interesting language. thing, because I wish to say <coughs> that now it's not necessary, but... <coughs> unfortunately, it still is. And so, I have this thing where... I. You know, before that, like I had done the sort of like, let's reclaim that I can dress whatever I want and I can be this, I should be able to walk out the street naked or in knickers or in super sexy clothes and no one should touch me. You know, mm-hmm, I've, mm-hmm. I've done all that. Yeah. But, and, and you know, and that's all cool and fine. And like, you know, where the burlesque, um, you know, burlesque scene started was all that, like reclaiming and, and, and mm-hmm. um, being uh, challenging. But, but then it's so easy just to see that you are the mainstream was expected mm-hmm. and I think that was my thing that like do you know what I'm, I don't want to be out there like reclaiming being in hot pants reclaiming being sure, in a yeah. I just want to be out there doing my stuff yep. and do it in something that I feel comfortable yep. with and you're saying that like I mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. just do it the yep. way I want to yep. see yep. it yeah and for me outdoor arts and and circus when when I started it was actually after having done a lot of like saying this is wrong this is you know no 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 I was like let's create something that's the positive Let's create something that I would like to see. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I would like to see three women just doing their yeah. shit without mm-hmm. having to apologize or, yeah. or dressing up for it. Yeah. Now, uh, I always think that one of the main things that I see when I watch you is a physical demonstration of female friendship. I feel it's a very strong theme. And, and I've looked at audiences and I've looked at women watching you in a way that they watch no other outdoor performer. And you know that would be one of my main reasons for always booking you is you mm-hmm. speak a different language to so many other artists, and there are many other great languages. It's just that happens mm-hmm. to be yours. And your friendship, your loyalty to each other, seems to come out in the work you do. Does that is that again? Was that at the start of your career? This bond between the three women that is it's tangible to me. Well, I'm asking you to talk very deeply about time. your friendship. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. No, but I think we spent so much time together um, as a trio because we had to spend so much, so many hours training. So yeah. I think, and then I think the experience in Cuba as well really mm. um, was very special because we spent three months quite hard training hard mm-hmm. and living in in the same room yeah. with you know with our Cuban teacher and his family it was all very. Um, intense and I think we got to know each other really well and um, we accepted that uh, no that also we really enjoyed hanging out with each other mm. and, and we became friends I think Lena and Emma were already friends yeah. but I think I slot to dig in quite well and I think because we we're all on the same page as well what as mm-hmm. Lena said what we wanted to say as women on stage and mm-hmm. in training in a training environment was very much you know we just gonna try this and we want you know there's nothing else we want to say you know we just want to do this and that's what we want to do I think already put us on a a very it created a Mm -hmm. kind of a strong bond and I think then we use that the way we create now because of course it's not the same trio anymore on stage but I think that really because we were together for so many years for about 12 years it was just the 
three of us performing the same trio. So I think that really shaped the way we also work with other people when we mm -hmm. invite people in our company that's how we work and it's important for us that everybody feels that there's no hierarchy that we feel um, all very connected because also otherwise the physical work does not work in the mm -hmm. same way uh, it's a lot of trust there's a lot of all that I mean that's my you know also being still in the physical work for me that's really important mm -hmm. if you don't feel that some kind of connection even if you don't have to be best friends but if there's not mm -hmm. something and that's what we look in our performers as well is that something not just the physical ability because mm -hmm. otherwise if you don't connect I think it'll be really hard to work so tightly together mm -hmm. mm. And, but I yeah. think it comes from the other side as well I think by working with the upper balance language where you know you are balancing each other you have to trust each other you know, yeah. both the flyer trusting mm -hmm. the bass, but yeah, also, yeah. to be honest, the bass trusting the flyer, because yeah. you're the one that they land on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, that you, I think, you know, especially now when we work with loads of different performers, you quite quickly have to connect the bond. Mm -hmm. through, you will connect bond through their physicality. Yeah. And if you don't, it's, it's a problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, but, but the hard. physicality helps to create those connections. Mm -hmm. Um, but saying that, when we work with like new teams, and I always try, even if, even when you're like a small project and really stressed for time, it's like, no, let's spend the first day mm. on physical trust exercises, sure. and it's sort of the theatre trust exercises, just with like pushing the physical risk within them, and it pays off every time. Mm -hmm. It's just like if you just allow that room for people yeah, to just feel a, a bit more, difference. you know, find their floor, find their footing, mm -hmm. you know, just feel like they know each other, but you know, know each other's bodies as well as as just have some mm -hmm. idea of them. Um, it just breaks that ice and just allows for better connections, which yeah. will come across on stage, I believe. So you've got this team, you've got the three of you, uh, you have the beginning of your friendship and your bond, and what was the first proper show you made then as, as Mimbra? Well, we made this act in Cuba, which <laughs> I don't even know what we call it, q what? I don't know. It was yeah, like a 10 minutes was, act. Yeah. When we were in Cuba, this is 1999, and there was like, no internet there was no like there was one neighbor that had a phone but it would like cause an absolute fortune it had to be arranged <laughs> oh, like yeah. you know there was like one friend of a f our neighbor who like had an illegal internet connection that we could go in the middle oh, yeah, of the night we and try to send an email to brighton yeah. festival <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and Dude. then somebody told us that oh you know if he gets found out he will go to like prison like oh, wow. yes okay. and we were like this is ludicrous like, yeah. we can't <laughs> we can't risk his freedom you know so we were like, fine, let's just focus on the training, mm -hmm. be here, like, I think post, even like, yeah, I, was, I just met someone before I left, and it was like, <laughs> sent, he sent like five letters and one arrived. I was like, oh, he really doesn't care, does he? Oh. But, like, you know, there was like no, we were very cut no, off. Yeah. cut out from the world, but yeah. But that really like made us, um, mm. you know, go, right, let's just focus on training. Yeah. We have this one random gig, we think, at Brighton Festival. When we come back, and let's well, do that, and see what it brings. Yeah. So we went there, did an act, which was the highest acrobatic level we have ever worked on, I think. Yeah. There's some ridiculous tricks in it. Yeah. Wow, okay. uh, went like, wow, this is pretty hard to do on the street. Um, <laughs> and we did a few different things. We did like some circus festivals, we did some corporate, we did some, but very much, quite immediately went like, oh, we love the outdoor. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then uh, Flick Fernando, mm -hmm. a dire uh, theatre director, and who had worked with us at school, she saw our act and came up with the idea for Sprung, which yeah. was our first proper performance. Yeah, uh, and we created that uh, that winter, and then in two thousand toured it, and that was like a total success. But it was yeah, interesting because that was for a, eight years, and so we had to like, stop touring. It was actually, yeah, we, it was when yeah. I stopped performing that we said, okay, let's just shut <laughs> it back. Well, I remember the last performance was yeah. yeah, 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 it was, it was uh, watch this face. Yeah, 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 and I was, it was yeah. very, it was incredibly yeah. moving. I haven't been on that yeah. journey with you, but Ten years it was, yeah, yeah, it was really. But was that good. that was. Um, um, that was interesting because when, when we did it, it all starts behind this um, black screen of elastic and just like pushing and just fingertips. And loads of people went like, there's no way that's going to work on the street. Mm -hmm. And I remember that how many people were like, and, and the first festival was like in one of the quite, you know, I don't even know which one, but it was one on a like, you know, high street where no one really told people that there was a festival going on and there was a black box with just fingertips. And you know, people just going, well, I'll just keep walking. <laughs> like, it, but, you know, as soon, but it, it, Quite incredibly, it was, I mean, total success immediately. And it was nice mm -hmm. to see that already from the start, that you can put something yeah. there. People don't think it's going to work because they think it has to be a certain way. But actually, 
if mm-hmm. just uh, the thought and the, the I wouldn't say quality, but you know, the, the, you have put the time in, you have mm-hmm. you know put mm-hmm. your thought in, and, and you really are there because you wanna wanna give something. Um, you know, yeah, it kept touring for like forever. Yeah, I mean, choreography so is well. really well yeah. crafted. So mm. well. And it sort of proved to us that you can ask for a focus from the audience. Yeah. You don't have to just go, oh, you know, crazy. It's like you can mm-hmm. ask them to come in, you know, and come in and stop stop all that. Stop the shopping. Come here. But you're, you're actually saying it's the same narrative as the chat of what you're doing with three women's bodies, breaking expectations. You're doing the same there with th- that mm-hmm. first piece of work then. You're saying, let's risk it. Let's, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which I think, you know, for me, is something I see in your work is you always are you always will push at envelopes, you know, you, you're moving forward always, there's a flattery, a bit of flattery. Yeah. Um, so at this point you're a company, are you, you've got a name, you've got a show, how are you running it? We... You're obviously yeah. dodgy internet in the middle of, yeah. When we come oh, back we to back. London, yeah. I mean, we so were literally, back. you know, we were doing it between ourselves, we were doing everything ourselves, and it would be like, you know, somebody was doing the booking, somebody was trying to have to travel, Somebody was the marketing. Sewing. Emma was sewing but the you, Was it that? Was it that? The word demarcation line. Like, you know, you you found. I'll do that bit. I do that bit. And yeah, yeah. I mean, to start with, I think it was a bit more mushed up than that. But we. But yeah. But to some extent, we always tried like who's you know who's doing what. But it was it was a lot together. Yes, and it was literally. It was a lot had, together. But well, I, I think I found like we found a document recently we yeah. made about this, and it has like the the budget <laughs> for for Sprang actually had the budget like five lines. And then, and then, like on the back of it, I think, or like I know it was the back of an envelope. We have like, okay, Lena has paid out this much, Sylvia has paid out this much, and then as soon as we got a gig, it was like, okay, let's pay off what we've individually paid, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. if there's some money left, you know, let's pay all those people who helped us in kind, or if they don't want it, like let's mm. put it into like the training. Yeah. And I mean, there was, I mean, I was selling sandwiches on a, in offices on like a really rusty bike, and I mean, we were I all doing things. So you were doing all the t- hundred jobs. Yeah. To keep yeah. Yeah. Going. Yeah. The, yeah. the thing was from the start, we were running the company ourselves. And I think that was yeah. uh, for a what, long time. What was really Actually. hard, but really paid off. And it was this choice at points of going, "This is too much," you know, and, and it takes too much energy from the training. You know, we want to train more, but you have to do all this administration. And uh, but on the other hand, it was like, "Well, do we pay someone else to do it?" And then we do the training, but then we don't have like we can't afford to pay someone else. Mm-hmm. We don't, you know, we need we need to have, we need to live. Yeah. And uh, so it was keeping it between us until it was. Un- actually, until we got support um, yeah, we from got the Arts Council as an organisation on. Fixed term yeah. agreement. It was I don't remember what it was called back then, but it was, it was, it was a very a small amount of money, but it was yeah. enough for us to go, oh, could we get an administrator? So you could get an administrator. And that was part time, yeah. 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 And to have an office, because up until then it was all done in mm. our bedrooms. Of course, yeah. yeah. Uh, and so you're, but you're creating shows at the same time as running the company. Um, and training. And training regularly. Uh, and you're also that identity is becoming stronger. Uh, now, I, I remember seeing you indoors at the Mime Festival. Mm-hmm. And again, that was it was interesting seeing, I mean, you did, you did a version of that show outdoors as well, didn't you? Uh, until until now. now. Yeah. yeah. And and that that was very strongly, it, it, the narrative of you as friends was really, really strong in that and sharing that with an audience. Mm. That was a show that we basically knew would be the last show, the three of us together. Yeah. Uh, so we knew, so I don't know. How, we, we knew that when we started creating yeah, it to some extent. Much. It wasn't sort of official, but I was struggling with quite a lot of. of, of, of um, no, am I? Am I jumping? No, no, it no, was. no. We knew it was. that it was. Oh, well, like, it was we were like also just goodbye. we spent so much time together, yeah. and we were like yeah. we all had you know different things pulling. We were like we do want to continue with this, but you know it would be good to you know we would like to work with other people and, and pull other people in, um, and uh, yeah, just just. Just also, I was struggling with back problems, mm-hmm. and, and I knew I needed to take a bit of a step back from the physicality. And so we were like going like, how do we take advice? I had a yeah. kid then already. I was, that's what I was thinking. But I yeah. would have had my first kid then. Yeah. So I, I had after I had uh, two of them, my first daughter, when we went back to touring straight after, which was interesting because we we were touring triptych at the point, mm-hmm. and it's this four meter high towers, and at one point I do like a handstand up on top of the towers, and you're out on the street and it's concrete underneath, and got a fantastic photo from yeah, the absolutely. National Theatre of it. Um, <laughs> and when I came back after having two, I remember the first show just being up there, getting ready for handstand and going, why would I do this? I mean, you know, I got a baby. Why would I do this? Yeah. This is so stupid. And I had to really like challenge myself to go, but you love this, you know, you want to do this. And, and so prove to myself that I could do it. But uh, I did it for that summer and then I was like, <laughs> maybe wow. not a handstand for me to high up in the air with that to say for you. 
But also, as, as physical performers and having kids and running company, I mean, mm. it's a big palette you've given yourselves. Yeah. Still. It's impossible, but then you do it. Okay. It's impossible. <laughs> that, like, that's... Do it, yeah, I mean, yeah. yes. You can talk, we can talk however much you want about work-family balance. It's... The, it's it's non, non-achievable. But yeah, if, I mean, you know. But you have you supportive wanna... partners in this as well. Yeah, I mean, of the, course. The, the, the un, those Comes at a cost. I mean. It makes such a difference. It makes such a difference. It makes such a difference. Yeah. Comes yeah. at a cost. Yeah. But, um, but also we have a supportive company. Well, the, I yeah. mean, there's that's that really too. Supportive company yeah. and supportive yeah. partner. Yeah. What, what allows... Yeah. And that's and been honestly, very strong in your ethos as a company about yeah. being fair, as fair as you can to yourselves. I know it's impossible and you can't do it, but you have been quite... No, you're quite strict in articulating, you know, your your responsibility to your the rest of your team beyond yourselves. Yeah, and just accommodate, and just yeah. go like, what's reasonable to accommodate? But like, I mean, I you know brought um, uh, my, my first daughter came with me on tour quite a lot, and I would bring my sister would come along. She was she was coming along for the first couple of years. Um, but you know, you can ask you can ask the festivals for you can't up the fee to pay for the babysit, but you can ask them to provide like room so you have like space for the kid and the, and the mm-hmm. baby and you know certain things just go no this is we think this is reasonable you know to ask and then there are other costs like yeah I know I'll, I, I chose to have a kid and I, I need I need to find a way of cover this cost it makes obviously a massive difference to have a to have a, a father who is involved mm-hmm. And, and, mm-hmm. And, and, and and takes responsibility to have a, to have a partner um, to, to do that but um, but it was it's a mix of like the company doing what we can as a company what we ask the festival to ask the question mm-hmm. yeah, and then and then to to I mean, it's just juggling it. You know, you're, you're taking, you have, uh, now we're two, and I mean, Sylvia just had uh, Frida a year ago. Yeah, so she's 13 months now. Yeah, so she's touring with me. Yeah. Um, but but and, my and last year yeah. we went to in Germany, my daughter is now big yeah. enough. So my daughter came and babysat her daughter. Isn't That's amazing. That's so amazing. That's lovely, isn't circle. it? Circle. Yeah. But it's also the physicality. Nice it's not yeah. easy to, you know, yeah. it's going back to work after having a kid. It's always hard, but then you're going back to like mm-hmm. work where you're like balancing in the air and throwing in the air and just building up the muscles again after like yeah. what's one of the hardest demand on your body, just yeah. the pregnancy itself and, and also basically breastfeeding. Um, you know, that was a real challenge. Yeah. Um, well, and it reflects in your work. I mean, you've talked you've done work that's about women's bodies quite mm. specifically about how they change uh, as they get older as they have kids and all of that that feed that's it's that narrative into, is like, in your work especially falling up for me was about that yeah. just sort of talking about like women's body and expectations of women's body more like yeah more in like the physical and what we feel ourselves um, and then I mean at some point I was like it's funny cause, but we've never done a show about motherhood I think it's a bit like oh god I don't need a show about that I know you're living it I deal with it every day so it doesn't but one thing I was going to go back to about yeah. the company and about running a thing, I think, and I'm interested, uh, I, I, I know, like, I teach sometimes, like, circus performers or, or um, actors and, and then, you know, dance. But I think the thing with circus and, and our skill, like the acrobalance, in those early years when it was really hard um, to make it, you know, go around, the fact that we had to do the training, mm-hmm. we had to train, like, three, four days a week to maintain our skills. Yeah. It meant that we had, you know, we had to keep together. Mm-hmm. And uh, sometimes when I talk with the actors, they're coming out and they want to start a company. Mm-hmm. But it's not like they have to meet up every week to do improvisation. Yeah. They should, yeah. but they don't, you know, don't. Yeah, yeah. So then it's like, they will then choose different things that they do. Mm-hmm. But then it's very easy to separate us, so to sort of yeah. slide apart or your, your schedules don't work together mm-hmm. anymore. And so I think sometimes oh. that the impossibility of the fact that you have to train several hours mm-hmm. a week as yeah. well, it's actually what kept Keeps us together. Because yeah. even if you don't have a gig coming up, you're like, well, we're going to have to do training for mm-hmm. when it comes, mm-hmm. rather than just going, also, yeah. Call you when there's a gig, you know. I, I think as well the fact that we had chose London as a base, but none of us is from mm-hmm. London or yeah. even British. So we all had to make that conscious choice of mm-hmm. are yeah. we yeah. we're going to live somewhere else that is not our country, that we made our country. Uh, but, you know, at the beginning, so we had that commitment. It was. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so we started yeah. making our life elsewhere, and and we really discussed it. From, we really discussed it. And we were like, yeah, yeah. we want to do this, and we're gonna stay in London because we love London. But you mm-hmm. know, also I think that helped to mm-hmm. keep us together because yeah. that's why we were there as well. You know, like geographically. And when you're creating, when you're working, um, do you have a shorthand between the two of you about in terms of your language? Your 
Well, we have worked I mean, We've done some really weird <laughs> yeah. names for all the moves. Yeah. That yeah. No one else understands. And no one um, else knows. I think, it's, I think we always... I don't know if we have a shorthand. I mean, we can refer... We can, of course, refer to a common understanding of shows we've seen or, or shows we've done. Yeah. I think we often have like the... Yeah, oh, this is a yeah. bit more like that show or this is a bit... We want to go more like... But, but honestly, I, I think every show we try to go somewhere different with. But mm-hmm. I think what we... It's I think one interesting dynamic we always have between us is even when I was performing, even when I was the acrobat, is the, is the balance between the skill and the storyline mm. or the expression, mm-hmm. the yeah, choreographic yeah. line. Yeah. Um, where I'm like, oh, but you know, I want to tell this, I want to do that. And so they're like, yeah, but don't forget the skills. We need to spend <laughs> mm-hmm. some time on yeah, the skills. Yeah. And you know, and, and but I this think is crazy fire juggler versus gymnast as well, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's been really it. part of creating a company to where it is. Is that comes, you know, is that yeah, we yeah, both that's... like try to defend a little bit of that ground, like, and and to remind each other of like, yeah, but if, you know, you see a show and you go, like, yeah, that's the skills, but it didn't have much feeling, yeah. you know, yeah. or like yeah. her going, yeah, that's all nice, but you know, it, need, it needs a bit more, you know, yeah. adrenaline for so you, you know, the balance of both. I think yeah. that's been constant skills, through yeah. the twenty years. Is yeah. that that conversation between where we want a company to sit between those two. And yeah. you must share taste. I, I mean, I'm yeah. sure you differ, but yeah, you must yeah. have a... No, we have. Yeah. It's very similar very taste. Similar. Most of the time when we tell each other about show, I think it shows, I think we yeah. would agree. I don't think there's... I, yeah. I remember with Pippi and Tom, I mean, who doesn't like Pippi and Tom? But you know, when there we had to choose, like Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, we were like, oh my God, this is one of the best things. Uh, yeah. Okay, that was a few years later. But I think a lot of the stuff we agree. Even I can't when it's remember not a show that. Thing. I don't think yeah. there's ever been a show that you loved and I hated, or vice versa. Yeah. No, that's true. I think we have a I wonder if it's like a grown taste because we've yeah. worked together, yeah. we've seen so many mm. things together throughout the years. Maybe it is a grown taste. Mm. And also, but you're sharing quiet, the great yeah. moments, you know, as performers, you mm. were, you were having exactly the same experience out there. Mm. You know, that's very interesting bonding, but mm. common ground in terms yeah, of yeah. that's you're, you're getting the same response from an audience, so it's going to guide, guide your work. Um, I've yeah. got some some particular questions we want to, I want to ask you just largely about outdoors, actually. Um, so, what is your earliest Lena first memory mm. of seeing something outdoors? You, know, you send me these questions. <laughs> yeah. Um, Weirdly, I, I actually think um, I saw a performance in my local, um, like the museum of Malmö. It's like an old sort of tower with an open court in the middle. And I remember, then they did, a, and this is really ironic, they did a Macbeth. And I think mm-hmm. that's pro- possibly the only Shakespeare I've seen until I came to right, yeah, yeah. England. But it was outdoor in the courtyard, and I remember like, and with like proper like fires and stuff. And it was really atmospheric setting. I think that might be the first outdoor, but it was very much like a ticketed show and like yeah, a theatre sure. show in any but other it's, sense. It's these things that yeah, see but it that in. one I, when I was trying to think back, I think that must have been the earliest. Um, and interesting that then I was thinking about like, but when I learned to juggle and when I started, I literally started that proper like just busking on the street show. I think I sort of just made it up a bit. <laughs> Somebody told me to juggle and I saw some random, you yeah. know, and I was like, oh, I couldn't do it. And I was just, but I remember because I was breathing fire and stuff, and I remember going. I got an audience. What do I do? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I breathe some more fire, <laughs> <laughs> and then I got like uh, chemical pneumonia. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Then I was like, no, okay, good. I need to find some uh, structure yeah, for this. Another, and then I started another. watching some actual shows. And what about you, Sylvia? I I was thinking about this as well. I come from a very small town where nothing was going on. So actually, when I really thought back, the earliest thing it would be the local dance group performing yeah. outdoor because I come from a seaside town so in right. the summer they do a lot of outdoor community yeah. kind of and we put a couple of speakers mm-hmm. by the seaside so there was a lot of groups performing and that would be really the, yeah, that's, but that's in lovely. terms of performance it wouldn't have been actually until well I traveled with my parents a lot so I remember in Prague because there were yeah. lots of I remember yeah. the guy with the glasses you know that makes the, oh, all yeah. the different that thing yeah 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 so that would be you know things that you see when you travel around and as a family we traveled a lot in the summer so it wasn't a specific thing but but more like bits of yeah little things here and there that and yeah um and who's been an inspiration in your work apart from each other (laughs) (laughs) you can't say each other well i'm i'm going i'm going to say vincent uh moreno espadosa who sadly died (laughs) i was thinking about it this morning yeah Yeah. Uh, because it was his yeah. absolute enthusiasm and absolute like 
of course you can do it. Mm-hmm. And we were like, you are kidding. I mean, you, he, he gave us tricks that were so ridiculous. We yeah. were just like on the floor, falling over, laughing, and everyone else. And, and we had some great teachers on the school, but yeah. most <laughs> of the English teacher, they were like, what are you even trying? <laughs> but his sort of like total refusal to accept reality or gravity wow. was hmm. wow. probably That's our biggest inspiration. And, and still My terrifying, biggest yeah. Inspiration. Uh, and you say yeah, it would be a similar thing yeah yeah and I think actually the enthusiasm that we found in Cuba because what Vincent mm. gave us was a real reflection of you mm. know Cuba and the country he grew up in and he trained and we found because we were we thought okay we're gonna rock up in Cuba where the level is really high we're training in a you know kind of really high level environment three women doing that they're gonna go what Mm -hmm. and it was totally the opposite they were really supportive they were always like do it pushing Mm -hmm. similar don't be worried don't be scared you know and and it was constantly like that so we were really it was brilliant and they also they really worked with no equipment no you know they didn't have much Mm -hmm. you know holes on the floor they would just go so they really had to do it they went for it and i think that really pushed us which which also meant they really (laughs) had to look cuba spirit yeah Yeah. but which also really meant they had to look after each other because they couldn't rely on the equipment so if somebody was going up in the air and blanked they were right in there mm-hmm. catching them, and that was something that was really like, oh wow, because we, you know, mm-hmm. rely so much on the equipment here. And still with you. Yeah. Um, proudest moment in outdoor arts. Mm-hmm. I would say it's for me. I was trying to think of that, but for me, it's loads of loads of mm. small mm-hmm. moments with the audience after a show. Right. Where the audience comes up and tells you something really honest about what they mm-hmm. felt about the show, where I just go, this is why I do it. Yeah. This is why I do mm-hmm. it. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's like loads of little ones. Or even now, like I, after your last show, you know, I was walking up because I just, just um, arrived as I was finishing the show. The mats were just full of kids. Mm-hmm. Doing yeah. 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 And lots of, you know, lots of young girls going, yeah. you know, going to reenact all yeah. this, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's one, of, yeah. For me, it's loads yeah. of small ones. Yeah, that, again, very similarly. We have very similar experience yes. in that sense. But yeah, exactly that and having, as you say, I think when you realize that you speak to a, a very specific part of the audience, specifically women, older women or really young girls, mm-hmm. and realizing that we can be quite inspirational for them, yeah, and that's, that's brilliant. I think the young girls um, thing is, again, something I used to really love about yeah. programming you, was going, oh, what a gift yeah. to these young girls who are going to see something that will change their perceptions yeah. of what they can do in their lives. and that's. Yeah, that's very special. Oh, it's quite often we have some like proper grannies coming up. I think yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of no, yes, one of the like yeah. first yeah. sprung had some yeah, like three yeah. grannies three proper grannies. like coming up going, so nice seeing the girls yeah. doing it. And we were like, yeah, that that's, that's, that's us, us that's us in my like, yeah. 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 no, Not future. that far away. <laughs> yeah. Back in um, the future. Far away. So, yeah. To someone considering going into outdoor arts, quite specifically working outdoors, what, what would you offer them as advice? As advice? Yeah. In terms of positives about the art, why they yeah, should go yeah, into why? the outdoor. What, what, yeah, what, for me, the main thing, and that's what I always remind myself about why am I still doing this with yeah. two kids and blah, 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 uh, it is the audience. For me, it is the relationship with the audience and all that that comes with it, mm-hmm. uh, as a, you know, it really links with the previous question. Yeah. That direct contact, that you can see them, that you can talk to them straight mm-hmm. after, that is, um, if they don't like what they're seeing, they can just get up and go. But it's a very honest, relationship I find and that I think is one of the most rewarding thing Mm -hmm. about working outdoor and really you learn a lot as Mm -hmm. well that you have to deal with a lot of situation the Mm -hmm. weather bad weather too hot too cold you might end up in a site that is not ideal or the floor is not even whatever it is but it really makes Mm -hmm. you a very all-rounded artist I think because you you know once you've done that I think then you can we become quite good at a lot yeah. of other things and I think that is invaluable as mm-hmm. an artist. It's hard but mm-hmm. it's invaluable. Yeah. It's great lesson. Do you have anything to add? Well, <laughs> I think you have you know, totally that. I mean, I think um, directing and choreographing things, I really appreciate being indoors sometimes. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, to be honest, like, you're, you're speaking uh, able to control lighting and the focus in, in a more way mm-hmm. and, and on the street you have to learn how to control the audience focus uh, theatrically. Mm-hmm. But that's a real gift once you learn it. Mm-hmm. I mean, because that's really, indoor you should always know yeah. how to do that yeah. without any of the tricks. But um, um, 
I think that honesty, that direct relationship. I mm-hmm. mean, even when when touring indoor, I always go like, but then the audience, will, even if you're in the bar afterwards, mm-hmm. the audience don't feel like they can no, come to you. Yeah. Whereas on the street, it's like right it's in there and talking to them. Yeah. It's yeah. just so rewarding. Yeah. It's so rewarding. Even if you didn't have a very good show, and then somebody comes up and talks to you, and you're like, mm-hmm. oh. So it's to- that's totally worth it. I mean, our experience as well with a physical show, um, we've toured a lot across Europe, uh, well, and further field, but a lot, a lot across yeah. outdoor festivals in Europe. And I mean, it's just taken us to so many places you would oh. never gone to yeah. otherwise. Little villages like yeah. on a mountain top in Italy, or like by mm-hmm. the seaside in Belgium, or like you know, random like Colombia, wine town, random yeah, and, and further town, field, yeah. yeah. And it's just taken us to places that we would never have had sure. a chance to go to otherwise, yeah. you know. Yeah. And, and that's been amazing. To practice the languages, so tied in quite yeah. well yeah. with course, my yeah. failed yeah. career. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you guys. That's and right. And I found that really, you know, mm. there was nobody even to share that with. So I was like, oh wow, they're, they're still here, they're here. And, it's, and that was for me such a great moment to see, I'm not going to call it your brand, you're just you're, this <laughs> trademark and spirit was so inherent there. So that's because of this partnership that has mm. survived 20 years, another 20 years of it, and thank you for sharing with yeah. us today. Thank you. Thank you. That's lovely. Yeah. Great.